Hello, I guess Valje could reach Shasket in program Ek BBC Alba, Hai Kuri Frostbeck, a Kuchkin and Boronik Prosecal, and in Sell Sports and Halabe. This is Michelle Valentine, I guess Hammy Tolicherak, a Valkuchkin Ur at a program in Chachkinse, Chechoshin Baun or Eknagamakin Olympicoch, Rona Howie. Our program is the program of 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 the everything involved in the past, Crikey. however long. So actually tell us first of all, how you got into curling, how did that even start? Um, I was 17 before I started, I was looking for something to do as a hobby when I left school. You do the usual sports at school, but then I thought oh, I'd like to have something to do at weekends. And my brother curled, so he got me to go up to the local rink and I hated it the first time. It was cold, I kept falling and I was like, oh, I don't know. But he persuaded me to go back and yeah, the rest history. And at that time it wasn't an Olympic medal sport. I was just playing it for a hobby and very quickly you start to travel around Scotland, meet lots of people and realise this is quite a social sport, this is good fun. Um, and then it just moved on. You go to World Juniors, World Ladies. Then all of a sudden, oh, oh, it's an Olympic medal sport. This is what you know you want to do. So I think over the years, I probably competed for about 22 years um, throughout you know my career. But uh, the Olympics was obviously the one that just came in as I was ending my career, really competitively. So I was very lucky to have that opportunity to go to an Olympic Games. So probably at the age of 17, you didn't even think that this could be a life-changing no. sport and then something that would change everything. And even curling for, for Scotland completely. Well, absolutely. And, you know, we didn't get much coverage in the press beforehand. You know, you maybe get a wee paragraph and uh, all of a sudden you realise the impact of an Olympic Games on a sport, but just with the media coverage. And for us, that was a huge part. Um, that we were really grateful for, that it helped raise the profile of curling. You know, we used to get jokes about curling your hair and sweeping floors, and all of a sudden, after, you know, our success, people actually thought, oh no, you know, this is a sport, and became very interested in it. So that was good. And they took it seriously, which obviously is so important, because when you do, if we go back to that Olympic medal, how was the build-up to that? Yeah, it was, it was a tough few years, um, you know, I lost in the last stone to go to Nagano in 98. So after that, I thought, no, right, I'm going to get a team together. We've got the same goal. We're going to fight really hard for the next four years to get to Salt Lake City. And we did that and we sat down and went through all, you know, what it would take, what the sacrifices were going to have to be. And, you know, we were all on board for that. So that was it, the four year build up. And then we qualified. They did it over. For Nagano, it was just a weekend playoff, whereas for Salt Lake, it was the most consistent team over three years from Europeans and Worlds. So that meant, you know, we qualified to go. Um, and then Salt Lake itself was just a huge emotional roller coaster. You know, we had nine round robin games, then two playoff games, then a semi and a final. So it was a very long week mentally um, and physically. So uh, it was a worthwhile week, obviously, with the end result. But uh, yeah, it's just an experience that you can't even describe to people. You know, you have to be there to experience an Olympic environment. Even in the round robin games, did you think we can go on to do this? We always knew, you know, it was the same teams we'd played at events for years. So we knew if we played well, you know, we can beat them. Um, so the f you've got to kind of look at it as the round robins, the first stage, then playoffs or semis. You know, that's a second part to the competition. So. You know, the round robin, we put ourselves in a good chance. We only had to win one of our two last round robin games and we were in the semi-final mm -hmm. and then we lost them both. So it was just that, oh, OK, we'll do it the hard way. And I think it was just that <laughs> Scottish <laughs> true grit and determination that, you know, kept us going. We knew we'd done the work. We knew we could beat these teams. So, yep, let's, we've got the second chance. Let's not blow it. And the resilience too to go on and do that and it's funny because people talk not people everyone is always known when we look back at that gold medal the stone of destiny 
However, I know that for you, it was a lot to do with the build-up. It was almost like an iceberg, and that stone, that final throw was just the tip of the iceberg, because it was all, it was the years before that building up to that very moment. Absolutely, all your years of training and hard work, and it all goes to that one stone, you know, and people talk about that one stone, but there was 40 hours of competition that week before that, you know, that we had to get through. So the last stone was kind of relief, if you like, that, OK, we've done it, it's finished. <laughs> well, what about coming back to Scotland? What about even the celebrations in Salt Lake City? Was that just totally yeah, surreal? <clears throat> Salt Lake was fairly quiet <clears throat> in that respect. No celebrations, really, because the men's final was on, then the closing ceremony and... But when we did, <clears throat> excuse me, arrive back in Scotland, uh, yeah, it was carnage. Even England, before we got to Scotland, there's people there waving flags. We were like, what's going on? Were you totally <laughs> shocked from that? Completely, because curling is not a well-known sport at that stage in England. Um, so the fact that uh, there's people there waving flags, clapping when we come off the plane, and then we were asked to go and Richard and Judy, and we were like, wow, we're in England, why are they interested in curling? Um, and then we came back to Glasgow and it was just amazing. You know, the one thing you want to do when you win a medal, you walk through the airport with your medal and all the people, we didn't even get to do that. We were taken airside <laughs> off to go to a hotel where everybody was waiting. It was just crazy. So you probably couldn't have even prepared for that no. before leaving for no. Salt Lake City? No. And that's amazing. Not and at all. 20 years on, you still keep in contact with your team? I do, yeah. We uh, are having a 20th anniversary reunion at the end of the month, so that's really exciting. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's really nice. You form a bond with your teammates, you know, good and bad. We had, you know, it's not all plain sailing on an Olympic journey. There are times where you just think, oh, what am I doing? Um, when you're trying to juggle everything and things don't work out. But do you know what? You just, as my motto to kids nowadays, never give up. Just keep fighting for what you want and you'll get there. Well, you're proof of that. It, honestly, Rona, it's so amazing to hear, but we will come back to that because we're just loving this. Thank you very much. Shirud Ingen Pacha Hound of Fine Kunigemichin Olympicoch. Ah, Shirud Thurley Sonic Jet Hound. Shina Yanu Kerr Thurson as Jay Hale. The Eve Muirhead at a Vigisha Dotri Shasket. Kurisha Hai Kotoch Shina Yanu. Shaira Arbishach on Nolik, a clicker crowly breaking yach eve near head er viran, give each other when Keru Olympics aiche. Do you know what? It feels um, just as special as the first, to be honest. Um, this has probably been the toughest one to, to get that, that spot on the plane. I'm not saying the other ones have been easy, but we seem to have done this one the, the hard way. But to know that I am um, heading out to Beijing for my fourth Olympics is, is very, very special. Um, I think especially with the pandemic and, and being a very tough year, to know that there, there could be a, a bit of a kind of light at the end of the tunnel um, will be great. It will be very different to my other Olympics in, in the, the way of no crowds and, and um, your family and friends not there to support you. But I still think it, it's, it's an Olympic Games, isn't it? And that can never be taken away from the event. Ha Eve Hain a Gajahuk of the Sadavachs and Eiche, a Kur Kujum of Arach Gora. Ach, Gavil Shok Kujok, a Tosh Barach Mishnachi. Well, well, that's it. When you've, when you've got a name that, that people maybe recognise, um, it does put a little bit extra pressure on you. And um, this time around, I think, um, knowing that it's your fourth Olympics, you kind of want it even more. And I've got a fantastic team behind me. We've got great coaches, great support staff, and, and we all really did come together when it mattered. It has been a tough year to even get a spot in the team because we they changed to a, a squad system. So we've all been fighting very hard for our positions. But I do believe that made us even better because it made us very, um, very resilient, very committed, very focused, and, and we were all driven for exactly the same goal. A scare pandemic. Ha skipper GB Critch get a cruise Olympic of Thurivavan. 
ach a janinchen na helen jessica in ach moran i think preparation is more or less the same apart from basically dodging covid right now <laughs> Because um, like we want to make sure and get on that plane, and, and we know how how strict you the everyone is um, if you're if you're ever a close contact or if you have it yourself, and, and it's everywhere right now. So we are more or less kind of wrapped up in cotton wool. We've all taken the decision to to more or less keep ourselves isolated and um, to to stay away from the virus, and um, we know that everyone respects that. Everyone within the the kind of support staff the. The teams and and everyone at the National Curling Academy. So uh, the holding camp is going to be a very um, strict bubble as well. So British Curling are doing all they can. Um, they've done a fantastic job to to get to get everything set up and um, not long till we're on the flight. Be famic eve a hiolus Olympic ocalier a horse don skipper eiche. See it ulu itjanu at a hiet ko arpish Olympic ocalier. Well, of course, like I'll always be there for for all the girls if if they want as any advice. Um, I think even for me, this experience is going to be different because, as we said, I think it's going to be a slightly different Olympics with the pandemic and things taking place. But I think we can just go out there. I think we need to enjoy it as a team. Um, I am the only one that has experienced an Olympic Games before, but I think it's a good thing to have someone there that that has experienced it. Um, I do believe that we are all in a similar position within um, the team, though we are a new team, We've got new coaches. Um, it's a different British curling have made a lot of very positive changes to to get us in this position, um, and that's without a lot of the the UK sport lottery funding and and Sports Scotland's help um, throughout the last few seasons. Andreas Studi achieved good night at the eve. I see Jeshal Kumal Ora Sunrunchen, a Shaggy Nyak Driachain, a commission Lu Klesichi, Common Olympics Breach in Yachungorich. Yeah, like I, I applied for the Athletes Commission throughout through the, the British Olympic Association. And I think it's because I always want to kind of give back to the sport, not just for curling, but to, to Olympic sports. And I think being quite an experienced Olympian, I, I do believe as an, as an athlete, like it's something that I am very passionate about. And of course, I'm not going to be curling forever and ever. So it's good to have um, a few experiences like that in your bank. And, and hopefully it's something I can I can build up over the next few years. It's a very new role for me, so it's it's very difficult for for me to say right now. Of course, they know that I'm tied up just now, um, and I think the the new kind of cycle is going to start. Um, I think about March, April time, um, and that'll be good because, of course, I'll be I'll be finished the Olympics, and I can focus a little bit more on that then. A hulikehir bliana be a nation at rachin sas le krolog. I is a land physic eve at an Arab Jehun of Iskachet. Hi, Gatchachu, Gavilla Ekeloch. Ach Brosnacho, Gavilla Lud Dunya Gavrosnach. Probably a little bit of both, to be honest. When you're actually curling, you don't, or I forget how many thousands of people are watching. Um, but when you're off the rink as well, it, it, you do obviously see all the publicity and things. But I take the choice to switch off all my social media. So I try and stay pretty focused in my own little kind of bubble as such when I'm, when I'm out there. I think it hits you the most when you come home and um, every every second person you speak to I've watched you in the curling rink and that is very special and I think it's it's great for the sport. I think um, we need to jump in this opportunity as a sport and, and kind of keep keep as much people involved, keep as much people interested in the sport of curling. Ha'iv Eisen Skipper Eichke is Shilgu Beijing Lan Mishnach. See at the Thule can be in Tourist Eichke or Lee Saravachal. Um, do you know what? Like, I'm I'm very happy to to be going back to my fourth Olympics, and it's probably something that I never thought I would be doing. So, for a successful trip for me is I want to be able to do the the girls proud in the team. Um, I'm lucky enough to experience three before, but I want them to experience an Olympic Games. I want them to know how much of an achievement it is just getting there. But I also know how hungry they are for success, just like myself. So I think if we can come away knowing we have done all we can, these last few weeks we really are pushing the training hard and we have done um, throughout the whole winter. So um, when we come home, I think if we can look ourselves in the mirror and know that we've done everything we can, done the whole of Great Britain proud, um, 
uh, we'll be we'll be very happy. Rona, Eve is now off for her fourth consecutive Olympics. Can you just explain the magnitude of that? It's a massive achievement. You know, for any athlete to get to one Olympics is fantastic. But four, wow, <laughs> that really is a huge achievement. And, you know, Eve is somebody that just strives for success at all costs. And, uh, you know, I'm not surprised that she's there. Well, she does already have her bronze medal from 2014. I know you were a big part of that. Well, uh, they had to win it on the ice. I was the head coach for the women's GB programme for the four years leading into Sochi. Um, so I spent a lot of time with Eve and the team and uh, yeah, it was a really exciting time for them. They were so close, you know, to winning the semi-final and unfortunately they, were, they lost to Canada, but they came back, bounced back really well to win that bronze. So she's hungry for more. Did you see something special in her back then? Yeah, absolutely. You know, she's got so much talent um, and she just wants to succeed in everything she does and she wants to be challenged from a coaching perspective. She wants to be better and uh, she won't sit back and just rest on her laurels and say, OK, we've done well, you know. She wants to be better all the time and that's what you want in an athlete, that somebody who wants to constantly improve. And the gold medal, you almost feel like Eve will not stop until she has that Olympic gold, don't you? I know. Well, she's got European gold, she's got world gold. It's the Olympic gold that, you know, she's missing in her collection. So, yeah, she wants that one. What about the team? Because she is the only one from this team who's been to a previous Olympics. Do you think that is a, an advantage or a, or a disadvantage for the rest of the team? How, how would you use that? Yeah, I think it's a really good mix because Eve's got the experience and can lead that team with her leadership skills that she has. So, you know, the team are naive in a way, which is quite nice um, that they're going. It's going to be like any other curling competition. They're playing the same teams. You know, they've not got the added pressure with all the crowds and because that's not going to happen in Beijing. So I think the team are just going to lap it all up and enjoy the experience. And that's what they have to do. Um, you know, they've been at a lot of major events, so they know how to deal with major championships. And it's just the same, in theory. <laughs> well, that's the thing, it wasn't the easiest road to get to this point. Can you just explain the roads that, that they have taken to actually qualify for the Olympics? Yeah, so the Olympic nations, um, there's 10 countries qualify for the Olympic Games, whereas at Worlds we can have 13. Um, but Olympics is only 10. so the ranking from last year's World Championships, which again was in the bubble and it was very difficult and different for athletes to compete in that. Um, unfortunately, Eve didn't finish in where she needed to be. So it meant they had to go, Scotland had to go to the pre-qualifying event in the Netherlands just before Christmas. Um, but she just won European gold in the November. So she was in a really good place. They were playing well, they were confident. So I, you wouldn't, doubt that she was going to qualify but it was just a different road to go and do you know sometimes that extra pressure of just having to go through a qualifier and win just maybe gives you that extra fight when you get to the olympics and that hopefully just that extra edge to kind of yeah. push on through the rounds and it also hasn't been plain sailing in terms of her um physical health with her hip operation too that's right during this cycle she did have major hip surgery and do you know she's worked so hard um, fitness wise and physio wise to get back to where she wants to be and she is she's in a really good place now and that for her as well has been an extra area apart from the curling that she's had to fight through so yep she's in a really good place playing really well right now and uh, I think you know the the European success this year for a new team they had to go through a squad system to try and just after the Worlds, when they didn't qualify for the Olympics, you know, something had to change. It got to probably a stalemate of the team and, you know, have a squad system, all fight for your places. And it just seemed to refresh the team. And now all of a sudden, you know, Haley coming in at lead at Europeans, first major event, and she played fantastically. So, yeah, really, really exciting new team lineup. Yeah, it'll be really, really good to watch. And the other thing about Eve, which she was uh, talking about at the end there, is, is about ensuring that she, younger people get involved in curling. I know that's an important thing for you too. 
Absolutely. We need the youngsters in the sport because they are the future for the sport. So, you know, during the Olympic Games, we all, we've got a try curling campaign for every ice rink to, you know, get youngsters in and get people involved in the sport. And it's the one time every four years that we get the coverage. So we need to take advantage and get people into ice rinks. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, young people are the future. So get them in, get them playing and hook them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there will be with the Olympics coming up too. And that's the thing, it's such a family sport. It's so, I mean, that's what we were <laughs> talking about. This, you don't really hear of anyone involved in curling who doesn't have a family member who plays or has played. Absolutely, and in my generation, a lot of the ones that came through, it's because they sat in ice rinks watching their parents curl that they then started. And, you know, yeah, it's a great social sport and great family sport. Um, so, yeah, it's... I think it's a sport that is so good because for all ages, you know, in my club, the youngest is 11, the oldest is 88. So you can be <laughs> any ability, you can be any skill level, you can any age and play the sport together, you know, and that's what's so nice. It's very few sports that you'll get an Olympic champion with a world champion playing in a club with youngsters and, you know, that's what's appealing. It is, it's amazing and it really is for everyone. Thank you. Hyundai Kelsey Stewart will rig a skeleton on an herb goes fine at a flying Beijing. Vrainiri three shasketer shan shalaga horse grain a cornish high call talk spores ur unsukog and ur a house to us and a blinikin. As far as the Tosh Bui Vore the Bear, our Van Alpena Kelsey Stewart de Gisha, Cheoki Ora, and Sports Luke Lisa Kalentik. My life revolved around sport. Almost every decision I made was based on sport, to be honest. And I was really, really lucky that I had a lot of opportunities as a youngster growing up. And yeah, it's really shaped me to be who I am today. I'd have been in about primary four, I think, and there was a local kind of one mile cross country race came up for the local primary schools. And so it was primary four to seven, so I was on the younger end. And yeah, so they advertised at school and I went home and said, oh, I really want to do this. But I mean, I wanted to do everything at that age, I think. Um, so my mum said, you're not going, you're like me, you can't run. Right. So um, then I kept going on and on and on about it, just would not be quiet about it. So eventually my dad said, oh, I'll just take her. And then I came second girl, which for being on the younger end was quite that was quite good. So then we were like, oh, maybe actually she can run. So, uh, yeah, it just kind of spiraled from there and um, joined the school cross country team, joined the local athletics club. And yeah, it just kind of went on. But Kelsey and Tullapanaka share, so raise Keith Keith meet it. I guess by my first year skipping a halopa at Nigemi Kinoko Lyash and the Derby is a hoch jeek. Oh, it's huge. You know, everyone wants to be a Scottish champion. You know, you grow up wanting to be the best in your country and, um, you know, to be able to stand on top of the podium and things. Um, so that was that was huge. Um, that was a massive achievement for me. And I was so proud and so delighted. Yeah, amazing experience, real learning curve for me as a young athlete to be thrown in there. Um, you know, being surrounded by people that you've looked up to for years, that's huge. And um, so, yeah, like learned a lot about myself on that trip. Um, not getting to run in the final team was obviously very disappointing and um, it probably knocked me a little bit, but I kind of came back from that and um, was able to sort of learn from that experience and take things into general life, to be honest, because you're always going to get knockbacks, you're always going to get setbacks, and it's important to be able to kind of bounce back from that, really. As you keep finding a mark me in a program through the Arca, Ronnie Kelsey is far as I can argue, good skeleton yachting, as my games is gaming in Olympic Arca Yawri a ring. I'd always kind of fancied giving it a go. I'd always watched it and thought, oh, that looks like a bit of me, to be honest. So, um, and then they were doing the Girls for Gold recruitment campaign that Lizzie Arnold had come through just like a few years prior. And Lizzie obviously got 
gold at um, 2014, 2018 Winter Olympics on a fast track programme. So this was the same programme and they had advertised it and someone I knew sent through the link and said, oh, I think, I think you'd be all right at this. So I was like, oh, I've got nothing to lose. They probably won't want me. I'll fill in the form anyway, but I thought it won't come to anything. So then I got through one round, got through another round. And then I was like, oh, wait, okay, here we are in the final selection weekend all of a sudden. What, what, where did time go? <laughs> um, and again, probably expecting not to get picked because we started off as 250 girls. So it's a big, big bunch. Um, and we did so many different screenings and things. And, you know, so many aspects go into a skeleton athlete. So I didn't expect to get on and then somehow got on. And yeah, it was amazing. Mae Kelsey yn mysg nysiaen yn myddiedig ac os hwyl i gan nyrf i ar y dwi ewl sy'n sôn y chyd tŵrus a fi tenig i'r dde. Norwy was so much fun. Like, to be in with such a good group of girls as well was great. And we all support each other and push each other on because you go on there and yes, you've been on the dry track at Bath, but the dry track is only a 150 metre straight that the sled's on rails, whereas now you actually have this heavy sled that you have to maintain and do, you know, you have to adjust your runners every time before you slide, you have to do all that sort of thing. Um, and then it comes to the sliding and you're going so fast, you don't have a clue what's going on. The first time you go down, you feel like you've gone through a washing machine. And so that's all the way of describing it. You're like, how do I work this thing? How do I steer it? And you don't have a clue what is going on for the first few days and you think you're the only one who doesn't understand what's going on but actually you realize everyone else is the same and um, we all just kind of carried each other through and it was so much fun. Yeah I was really really proud because I'd I'd done really, really well. It was just unfortunate that I've always had a bit of a tight back and it never been flagged up as an issue before. But when I was on the sled, um, it meant that my position, I was slightly more at risk of concussions because my chin would drag. Um, and they've obviously got a long-term duty of care. So I was really proud of how I performed myself, but just sometimes you can't help the way you're built. And um, that's, just, that's just kind of how it is. And I think long-term... Um, they've they were definitely doing the right thing for me because I don't want to have problems further down the line. So, um, but yeah, from an ability perspective, I was really really proud of how I'd carried myself through the whole thing as well. It was great fun. I've learned a lot about myself, and I think life experience is a huge thing. And the more life experience you can get, it stands you in better stead down the line and it transfers to all other aspects of your life. So I really think it's it's been a great journey and uh, it's one that I certainly am very happy I went for. Eidas y trenig an y lwch leisach, a Kelsey y clach gyda hwn i'w gwrs meioroch o gyd a hymyrch, ac ys a'i gobydd cael ydy active schools gwrs clawn y frosnach o'ch sbors i achaig. I'm kind of just, I'm training in athletics at the moment. Um, I've slotted back in with a group at home and um, training with Zoe Clark again, who I trained with before. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of slotting in. A very different athlete probably to what I was before. Um, and it's learning to play with these new strengths and having these new weaknesses that weren't previously weaknesses. So um, <laughs> not maybe having the endurance engine that I once had. So it's it's very interesting so that's kind of plans in terms of that and um i'm working now for active schools in aberdeen city um, and working in a very deprived area and using sport to kind of try and aid the transition between primary and secondary school for a lot of kids so sport's been really good that's given me a lot of opportunities and i think it can be a really useful tool and um, to help others as well so yeah Rona, it really does just show the highs and lows of sport and everything that you go through and everything that you have to deal with and the setbacks and the change of circumstances and finding out things about yourself that you never knew. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, <laughs> sport is challenging. And as I've said before, it's an emotional roller coaster in everything you do in sport. You know, you don't win all the time. You don't succeed all the time. You have to go through these lows as well. But, you know, hearing that story, it's just incredible. 
and it's great they do that talent transfer and have these days to get people from other sports interested in winter sports because there's not the opportunity as much in Britain to be part of winter sport mm -hmm. so uh, it's great that she was able to have that chance absolutely and you know it is a su successful program Lizzie Arnold went through it and Kelsey was so close 250 girls down to six so close but you know at the end of the day the duty of care to health is more important so um, it was great they picked that up as well and for her going forward and her you know and anything else she does through life those experiences will have really stood her in good stead mm -hmm. and even going back to athletics because um, she's coming back as a different athlete she knows different things about her body and hopefully she can now use that to succeed there too yeah definitely take what she's learned and move in and you know she's helping encourage youngsters in sport in general so it's fantastic. Absolutely. And Eve, tell us about bobsleigh, because it's not one that many people will have seen in person. And, and Skeleton 2, sorry, for, for two of those events, if you're watching on the TV, the likelihood of actually being there is so far away. So actually, when you're there and you're seeing them on the ice and the speed, tell us about that. Well, you don't see Skeleton and Luge and bobsleigh on your day-to-day -day <laughs> journeys through <laughs> life. <laughs> you know, um, and... That's where it's, it is different for these sports because it's harder to get people involved in them. Um, but, you know, when you stand at the side of the track and they pass, you can't actually see the colours and know what nation has just passed you because they go so fast. You're just like, whoosh, and they've gone. And you think, And the oh, noise, okay. is it loud? Uh -huh. It is really loud. And I think in Bobsley, because they're in, in the sled, they seem more secure. But when they go in skeleton head first, oh dear. <laughs> You need nerves of steel, I think, for that one. You do, <laughs> and very brave. And I was enjoying what Kelsey was saying. The first time she was on the ice was like being in a washing oh, machine. <laughs> I could imagine, <laughs> having seen it live, I can imagine that. Uh, <laughs> the way is. Yeah, no, a, a great sport to watch, and we do wish Kelsey all the best. But if we do go back to Caroline. How do you feel, how do you think the team will get on out in Beijing? Yeah, do you know, this Olympics, I really feel the GB curlers have got huge potential to be on the podium for all three disciplines. It's the first time we're in mixed doubles. Bruce and Jen play together so much, you know, and they, they're current world champions and they've, they are ones to watch out for in the mixed doubles. Um, so men and ladies as well, definitely. They've just both won European gold and uh, they're, in good form and during COVID it's been hard to not have the competitions to compete in so you can do all the training but it's that competition you need to learn and um, through experiences but they've been lucky they've had the National Curling Academy to train throughout and they've kept their training up and uh, they're all in a really good place going into the game so it's so exciting. So you're you're feeling good about this I can tell you. Yeah absolutely. They're reaching for the top. Absolutely. Okay, There's no really reason good. why not. And what about for you going there on the other side? You have been involved in the media since you, you for, for so long, haven't you? So what's it like dealing with that side, the kind of different kind of pressure? Yeah, you still get really nervous for your own athletes, but it's trying to be neutral and not say us or we, and <laughs> you know, you're, you're there for all nations. So <laughs> it's ha trying to have that neutral hat on that's quite difficult at times when you really want your guys to do well. Um, but yeah, I've seen the Olympics from a playing side. I've seen it from a coaching side and, you know, I've seen it from the media side and an equipment side and that part of it. And it, it's, it's such a big event and such a good event to be part of. So I'm just really fortunate I can still go out and be part of an Olympics. Was your favourite part still just playing and being on the ice and, and just being there, everything that's involved in it? Yeah, you know, it's trying not to get sucked into everything that goes on in an Olympic Games. You want to just focus on what you're doing, and that is curling, and that's all you focus on. So it's good to be part of the opening ceremony, enjoy that, and then you're focused on curling. That's it. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's just special, and uh, it's really special for all these athletes. So many of them, it's their first games. But, yeah, I'm really excited about the prospects of all GB athletes. Oh, well, it's been so wonderful to have you on and so lovely to hear your stories and, and just what Caroline is for you. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. 
Well, she now is on a knock, and I'm here to be manager of Vodanich is Clanny and Rangers, a mini doll call rooms and studio. Jen Keen, she's a well, she's a lent on BBC Alvar YouTube, or she's a hula shin, who can go to the three shasket ein. He's in Shevanach, yeah, again.